Hello, I'm your mayor, Chuck Bennett, and uh, I'm here today. I'm going to be visiting with uh, Police Chief uh, Trevor Womack. Uh, before we get started, uh, I want to remind you that the budget season is underway at City Hall, and certainly one of the areas that I think will be of interest to a lot of our residents is how the new chief sees his department, and uh, it you hear a lot about it during the budget season, so I'll be looking forward to uh, talking with him about that. Chief. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Let's start, though, with uh, kind of one of the newsier parts of this. It's the audit. Mm -hmm. or the, really, an audit's probably the wrong word. Uh, what, what, what was that report we've now received? Uh, I would refer to it as a community policing assessment. Great, great. What, you, what was your takeaways? Uh, my, my initial takeaway from when I saw the first draft yeah. uh, was that it was actually well aligned with many of the ideas that we had already been discussing within the organization and, and we're working towards. Um, so I didn't find anything in there that was really contradictory to where I think we're headed as an organization. Right. So I think that took that as a positive. Yeah, that, is, that does seem very positive yes. to me. So th there's a list of 10 or 11 kind of overarching findings in that assessment. And uh, a few of them for me that really stood out for me were kind of foundational. Mm -hmm. So for one would be um, a need to increase our analytical capacity. Yeah. And for me, that's foundational because I think if we're going to make data-driven decisions, you know, if we're going to police in a smart way, we have to have data. We have to be able to analyze it and make products out of it that we can use to make decisions. And um, we are lacking a bit in that area here, and so we're going to be investing some time and effort to, to understand how can we increase that analytical capacity. In that, uh, in that area, is it that the data isn't being collected or it's having people who have the time and the expertise to analyze the I data? I think it's more of the second piece. Is there. it? I okay. do think there's data. Um, it may be a little bit dis disjointed. Sure. And we're f trying to find ways to pull that together and make sense of it. Uh, we currently only have one crime analyst for an agency to decide, which, really? is, which is small. Um, and so I do think that there'll be you know, a data component, there'll be a technology component, but there is going to be kind of a staffing component of that too that's necessary to make Great. good use of the information. Well, that uh, I know the neighborhood groups that I attend uh, are always interested in that kind of data, and a lot of it is just understanding what it means. So I think that'll be tremendous in terms of getting that out into the community. I think a lot of people think they live in neighborhoods that are have more crime than may or may not be there, or less crime that may or may not be there. So that would be really interesting. Um, what are some of the other uh, areas? Also, uh, there, there was a finding that spoke to uh, our interactions with folks experiencing homelessness. Yeah. Um, and I think that really speaks to a, much more than just the police, of course. It yeah. speaks to our systems in the region and what we're struggling with as a city um, and how we respond to folks experiencing homelessness. So I see that as an er another area that's going to take um, extreme collaboration, yeah. with the not, not just the police. <laughs> that's um, a diplomatic so, way of putting it. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, we're, but we're looking at that. How can we partner? And how can yeah. we expand upon the good things that we may already be doing? And how can we bring in other partners to collaborate even better? One of, uh, the, co one of the suggestions most commonly heard is uh, uh, copying the Eugene model, uh, their 30-year-old CAHOOTS program. Yes. Uh, we have, what, three... Uh, response units and really a fourth is coming online with uh, Northwest Human Services. It seems like we have that kind of medical so or I, I, mental I health do, response. We do have some of that in place and, and yeah. for me this has always been about expanding those types okay. of services. Okay. I, I think there's not quite enough. But we have a, a model in place now with our behavioral health unit that partners you know, law enforcement with county mental ser health services right. um, to respond to folks that may be um, experiencing crisis. Are they used and quite a bit? They are, and, uh, but, I, but they still are limited hours based on funding availability oh. and capacity. So I think that's an area we could expand if the funding was there. But then also this idea of CAHOOTS is much more about response without law enforcement whatsoever. Yeah. And I do think there's value there too, mm -hmm. but I think it, it can't come at the expense of some of the other things. And so right. to me, there's, there's a response without law enforcement. There's a co-response with law, law enforcement, would that make sense? Oh. And then there's a law enforcement response. And I wow. think we need all those things, not one or the other. Yeah, you, you know, as uh, you read the paper or watch the news, you, you sort of see these, and I think it's easy to say, well, now you could have done that with the police, without the police, and, but to have that standardized, I think, uh, would be really helpful yes, for, uh, for everyone involved. Agree. Yeah, I, I, that's good to hear. What are some other changes you see? I, one, of the, 
I'll tell you, take away from me, and uh, I get sometimes criticized and sometimes mm. lauded for it, is you're 61 officers short, mm. is that right? That's yeah, kind of well, how I see it. I, I, you know, that is a good, <laughs> I think, a good rough estimate to say. Yeah. If you, if you simply look at the, the ratios of staffing along the West Coast agencies, similar to Salem, um, I do believe we're anywhere from 50 to 80 officers under yeah. where we should be. And so we're, we're bringing in some more resources to help us understand that better. So we're going to do a deeper dive and assessment of staffing right. to try to really understand what is the right number for Salem. That's a big number. It's an expensive number. Wow. Um, but so far, it's been four months for me since I've been here. And so this, <laughs> this is a need that Chief Moore identified. This yeah. is a oh, need yeah. that now I've confirmed myself. And now um, it's been reaffirmed by this community policing assessment that if we're going to move forward on some of these initiatives that I think are critical, to build trusting relationships with our community, um, you need staff time to do that. And so that, that comes down to a funding issue. It's going to be real interesting. I think, uh, as I mentioned, we're into our budget cycle to <laughs> see how people who uh, are interested in this respond to the idea that we, we really need to make sure we're staffed at the right level yes. to, to uh, appropriately respond to every kind of, right. uh, every kind of situation. Chief, one of the uh, things I've been really intrigued by, because it's been a long time since we've had a new police chief here. How's the first year going? How's all this? Where are you in your first year? Where are you going over the, what have you got, uh, eight months left in the year? So what what, do you, what can we expect I, from? Thank you, I appreciate that question. The first four months for me have been great. It's been okay. really about introducing myself to the community, um, getting to know the organization. I invested a lot of time in that. Uh, but now we have transitioned into kind of the second phase of my first year, which is much more of a deep dive into the organization, assessing some key areas like recruiting, hiring and training, um, budget and staffing, analytical capacity. So we're in that phase right now, and I think the results of that assessment process are going to feed right into a strategic plan development phase for the second half of this year. And I think at the end of that process, what's going to happen is there'll be a very clear vision for the organization moving right. forward, and it will wrap in um, all these things that we need to accomplish, for example, through the community policing assessment mm -hmm. into the strategic planning. Great. Well, that's been the way we've been uh, kind of uh, rolling here in Salem has been strategic plans. And I think having a, uh, a new and uh, re revitalized strategic plan for the police will be of, of tremendous interest in the community. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you for joining us. I, I really hope you've enjoyed hearing from the police chief. Uh, he's very available to talk with. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with him, uh, you can reach him through the police department. We'll have a link here for you to take a look at. And thanks again for joining us.